as a director or as a filmmaker, curiosity is something that it feels like a muscle to me. It's something you have to like intentionally kind of work out and continue to do. Walking around with a big camera, a lot of times it forces a conversation with people. Can I take a portrait of you? You look incredible. Hey man, I'm Ryan. It'll be on film, so it'll take just a second. Is that cool? Is a way for me to ask some questions of a stranger um, in a way that I wouldn't have, I would never do otherwise. You guys would be cool if I like make yeah. a portrait? Yeah, yeah that'd okay. be great. Do you mind taking a photo too? We'll do All the right. models, but. We're gonna do everybody. Okay, We'll cool. do one at a time. What are you doing this for? Uh, man, I, so I'm a filmmaker, but uh, on my downtime, I like to run around and just shoot people. Take portraits, <laughs> yeah. Meet awesome. interesting people. That's awesome. So. Basically came into filmmaking from photography, so. It made the most sense for me to begin kind of as a DP. The more I kind of spent time on set and watched people work, the more I realized like that I probably was more of a director than a DP. The transition from DPing to directing felt very tenuous and felt very kind of one foot in, one foot out. I didn't really know if it was happening. Just heaping more uncertainty on top of uncertainty. In the midst of all that, I decided to move to New York with my entire family. In my 30s, moving to New York, two kids, married, literally like when everyone leaves New York. When I finally was offered a roster spot with, with Pulse, um, it definitely felt like a really great moment in the sense of I've gotten to the point where like, I think it's safe to say that I actually am a director because I didn't feel comfortable calling myself that up until that point. And even then moving past then, it was a new layer of like going like, oh my God, there's all these things I didn't expect, things I didn't know. You know, they told me from the beginning, it's gonna be two years before we've been able to like help build you and your career to the point that this is what you do for a living. I was like, <laughs> cool. <laughs> like, oh great. You're literally going to pitch and pitch and pitch and lose and lose and lose. Like that's just how it goes. All of these would have been awesome, but like <laughs> moving on. <laughs> My goal as a director is to make things that people see. Um, I definitely am not someone who is only creating because I want to create. My immediate connections and kind of the first place to start was on the commercial side of things because I knew people based on my DPing work. But then at the same time, there's the other kind of film that I want to make, which is something that I generate from the beginning, whether that be finding a script or like literally writing a script from the beginning. And that part, I'm literally just really turning my attention to. I won't be able to continue to do my job well in the commercial space if I'm not also making films. Films are the things that, you know, I think really feed me artistically, creatively. I definitely do not take the commercials for granted, and I am still like the littlest director <laughs> at my production company for sure. Everything changes all the time. Nothing is static in this business. The people that you work with, how you choose to work, the process you choose to develop, those are all things that you have control over. When I was 25, I did a photography fellowship in Cambodia and went out and took pictures all night and then came back when the sun came up. You would bring your pictures to Gary Knight and he would help you edit into an essay. And he told me, he was like, dude, when I look at all the pictures on the ground, I can tell which ones you shot without seeing your name on them. He was like, that's a very unique thing to be able to have such clear articulation of what you have to say protect that at all costs from now until you die. Like that's the only thing you have as a creative person. He said, you need to go back home and buy a copy of The Americans by Robert Frank. 
He shot like over 88,000 photographs and it got whittled down to 82. They're grainy and they're blurry and they're um, of these in-between moments and things that like you should not be taking pictures of. And I have found them, continuously found them to be inspiring at most every phase of my career. As a creative person, it's your job to see the world in a particular way um, and then to speak up of what you see. 